Echo was born on January 5th, 1932, in the city of Alessandria. Alessandria is part of the province of Piedmont, Italy, best known for its hat-producing business. Umberto grew up during the reign of the fascist Benito Mussolini during the onset of World War II. As a child, Echo knew nothing of other political systems. He, like all of his friends, belonged to the Vion Fascists group and was expected to go to rallies every weekend. When the fighting got bad and the Alessandria area was at risk of being bombed, Echo's mother took Echo up into the mountains to a village where they stayed, keeping out of the way of the violence. From here, Echo watched the shootouts between the fascists and the partisans, which would later form the basis for the semi-autobiographical subplot of Buckholtz Pendulum. It was not until the end of Mussolini's reign that Echo was exposed to the idea of a democracy, a system of government that appealed to him greatly. Echo attended the University of Turin, where he studied medieval philosophy. After his graduation, he began publishing non-fiction works on the medieval time period, focusing on their art, culture, beliefs, etc. In the 1970s, however, a friend suggested that he write a book about monks, inspiring Echo to publish his first fictional piece, The Name of the Rose. The book was such a success that Echo immediately began work on a second novel. Valkold's Pendulum, Echo's second fictional title, is set in present-day Milan, Italy. The story is told from the perspective of Casabon, who, like Echo, is a political activist. Casabon is at a rally when he runs into Jacopo Belbo, an employee of a publishing firm. Since Casabon is an expert on ancient orders of knights, again, rather like Echo himself, Belbo invites Casabon to speak with Ardenti, a gentleman at the publishing house who claims to have amazing information about a secret of the Templars, one of the knight orders. Casabon listens to the man's tale and is relatively unimpressed. However, a few days later, Ardenti disappears, and Casabon, wanting to escape connection with the event, flees to Brazil. There, he meets Amparo, and the two fall in love. While there, Casabon also meets Agli, who claims to be the immortal Saint Comte de Germain of legend. Agli invites the pair to a voodoo ritual where Casabon is shocked to see similarities between the voodoo and Christianity, as well as other world religions. When Casabon returns to Milan, he joins the same publishing firm as Belbo and his associate Dio Tolevi. Egli also comes to Milan and takes the three to Drudic and Alchemic rites. The publishers take Ardenti's old information and decide to compose The Plan, a fake plot that they can sell as a novel. The Plan essentially claims there to be a secret power hidden in an underground kingdom of Templar knights, which, if one could control it, would allow utter world domination to the point of being able to control the winds and the land itself. Of course, none of them believe what they write, but someone else does. In the midst of a fit of arrogance, Belbo spills the beans and is taken seriously. He is kidnapped and interrogated for the secret he does not possess. Will Casabon be able to save him? All will be decided under Foucault's pendulum. Bottolino, a piece published in 2002, takes place during the medieval era. Bottolino, a farmer's son, is purchased by Frederick, the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. As Bottolino had claimed to see saints, Frederick believes Bottolino could scare the city he's sieging into surrendering. As it would turn out, he can. Unfortunately, Frederick marries Beatrice, a beautiful woman Bottolino cannot help but fall in love with. To escape his shame, he travels to Paris to study, where he meets Abdul and the poet. Together, they compose a forged letter from Presbyter Johannes, inviting Frederick to come east and meet him in his most Christian of empires. Bottolino hopes to use it to get Frederick out of Italy. However, political complications between the warring cities make this impossible. Upon Bottolino's return to Italy, he is sent to Alessandria, a city that has just sprung up in Bottolino's old homeland. Bottolino makes peace between the new city and the emperor, and hands the emperor a wooden bowl, telling him it is the Grossel, the Holy Grail, thus convincing the emperor to leave for the east. Frederick perishes on the journey, but Bottolino and his friends continue on, finally reaching the kingdom of Presbyter Johannes. What wonders do they encounter there? Read on, and find out. Throughout Echo's life and novels, the existentialist theme that pain and disillusionment will eventually lead to a life with meaning is reoccurrent. Echo lost both his parents and was so criticized by the Pope that he turned atheist.
He also lived through World War II, and in Italy alone, 330,000 people died, exposing him to death and destruction for much of his early life. His books reflect this suffering. Belbo and Bottolino both fall in love a number of times, and yet neither man is able to hold on to any of his loves. They find themselves questioning their sanity and the existence of God, and yet, like Echo, are able to eventually reach fulfillment. Bottolino, for instance, realizes that in paying his debts, he will at last be able to save his love, Hypatia. Today, Echo lives happily in Milan, reading and writing extensively. In his spare time, he finds meaning through going to rallies and speaking out against unjust leaders, encouraging others to do so as well. His books will forever be valuable not only for the compendium of knowledge they represent, each book is full of other languages, illusion, and philosophy, but also for how they demonstrate the hope of today, even after the tragedies of World War II. <laughs>